Let's get into the game. Uh, there's one already to kick us off, partnered up with the ever-present Amoongus. Oh yeah, we will be kicking things off here with Metagross and Amoongus. As in the face of this Thunderous and this Porygon 2 coming out from Marcus. These are both very interesting leads. Of course, Trick Room an option for Porygon 2, but Amoongus there to stop the Trick Room and kind of make you think twice before you do that. Uh, Thunderous coming in without getting a boost from Defiant, not always where you want to see it. You often want it in front of an Intimidator so it can immediately start to threaten. So probably has to leave the field if it wants to get that advantage in a little bit earlier. Or does it have something that could try and fire off big damage nice and early on? Plenty to consider for both players. And also on Alessandro Caleri's side, does his Metagross have a premium target right now? Well, if it's got a Psychic type attack, then it would be a Moongus. If not, it's kind of struggling a little bit there. So uh, both trainers obviously know about their opponent's team a little bit and, and get to play around that. And it looks like the answer from Marcus is just immediately get my own Metagross in. I'll deal with it this way. Yeah, I really think that bringing in that Metagross is going to be really, really smart, especially because this Metagross is a little bit different and unique than a lot of the Metagross that we are seeing in the meta right now. It has access to the move Rock Slide, which means that you could go for a max Rock Fall right into the Rotom Heat on Alessandro's side. But for Alessandro, it's time to go ahead and hit the Go button here. It is going to be Metagross getting that Dynamax Factor, and this is why we really see Metagross shine in this meta right now. Super bulky Pokemon able to withstand lots of super effective attacks and it can in continue to increase its bulk by going for moves like max quake to increase its special defense it often carries an item in the weakness policy you know that does really kind of boost its attack stats and as you mentioned it's got options like max quake like max steel spike that can boost up the defenses necessary depending on what it's staring down so rotom here a uh, really good switch in as it takes that ice beam and, and is able to uh, you know shrug that one off the rotom heat uh, something that people have been bringing back because of the prevalence of metagross and i really like both these switches i think getting the amoongus out is very very wise i think getting the thunderous out for later is very very wise and they're both just jockeying for position very very wisely this rotom though uh, will be a bigger threat now uh, looking at the opposing metagross as, as the game kind of starts to proceed Right, but as we talked about before, Metagross's bulk means that it's really likely to withstand a super effective attack coming in from that Rotom. And as you saw from that Max Rockfall, that's a really great way to deal with the Rotom too. So I don't really know how important it is going to be for this Rotom to kind of, uh, you know, how much work it's really going to do for Alessandro's side of the field. But look at this, it overheats its own Metagross. So Metagross is going to be getting that weakness policy boost and be able to dish out tons of damage. That's a huge commitment to get your own weakness policy. Usually people use like a real small attack that just does a little bit, but is <laughs> yeah. super effective. But he says, I'm going to overheat. I'm going to lower my own special attack. That Rotom's probably going to have to leave. But importantly here, it does mean because of the weakness policy boost, he's able to get the knockout on that Porygon, not give it the time to recover, which we obviously saw uh, Marcus hovering over in the menu. And that is a really quick way to swing momentum in your favor if you mm -hmm. are in the position of Alessandro. Yes, he's going to have to switch. Yes, that could be really, really annoying. But now he's got this Metagross with another turn of Dynamax, a boost to both defenses and a boost to its attacks as well. Obviously, it's only relying on the physical attack, but a big boost there and a little boost to both, both defenses means whatever comes in, it's going to kind of have to try and work through that. Yeah, you can already see that Marcus is kind of hovering over the Urshifu just because it does have that health item of Focus Sash. So regardless of how much damage this Urshifu takes, it will be able to stick around for at least one more turn and really help to try to stall out these turns of Dynamax. Not to mention, just Urshifu in general can be a really great way to deal with the Metagross outside of Dynamax. Urshifu is an interesting one. I, I'd be curious to look at the breakdown of, of people looking at, you know, dark versus water and saying, well, which one's more important here? Obviously, uh, if you had a dark type attack now, you'd be in a really good position. And um, this water one, maybe, like Surging Strikes is great. It hits multiple times, but it's not always quite what you need. And it's going to have to withstand a lot of damage. Uh, the, it, it is, of course, fantastic at dealing with the Rotom, but I can't imagine the Rotom is going to stick around very long uh, after mm -hmm. it's already used up its overheat. Its special attack is now significantly lowered. Yes, it does have some nice defense boosts, and maybe it's just going to sit there and do little bits of chip damage. Maybe that's the game for this Rotom now. Uh, that is certainly uh, something that had to be considered, but Alessandro uh, making me look silly by immediately switching that out for the Tapu Fini. 
Yeah, there comes that Tapu Fini with the Misty Surge. So it is going to be changing the terrain on the field, and we've seen how prevalent that can be in matches past, but Marcus also really does not want this Metagross to take too much damage here. So Thunderous now coming back in onto the field, and this might be a great way to, to eat up a Max Quake coming in from Metagross, but Surging Strikes first into Alessandro's Metagross is going to be able to hit that Metagross three times four critical hits every single time, but that only brings Metagross to about half. That's not nearly enough damage to be able to secure a knockout here, but Metagross does go for the max steel spike right into that Urshifu and does a decent amount of damage. Yeah, I mean, it's not enough for a knockout, but it's a huge amount of damage and Metagross uh, getting another defense boost. Really important, actually, uh, when you look at something like the Thunderous as the last Pokemon uh, that, you know, is coming in we did see it at the beginning of the game uh but with the porygon 2 gone you know you don't need special defense boosts anymore uh, you just need physical defense boosts and the metagross now has two of them to match its two boosts to its attack so it's probably feeling pretty good about about being able to to take attacks of course it's not dynamax anymore it's health pools a little more manageable here um but yeah it's still gonna be a lot to ask of this urshifu who is uh, in a tricky position looking down at tapu fini yes the thunderous can answer it but you can't mm -hmm. leave this metagross unchecked for that long Right, this Metagross is definitely going to be a problem, especially with all those boosts, but that's another reason why Urshifu can be such a great counter to it, just because it is going to secure those critical hits through all of those defense boosts anyway. So I think this is still a manageable position for Marcus to be in, and Marcus is also in a position where they still have Dynamax left. Being able to Dynamax uh, a little bit later can sometimes swing the momentum very, very rapidly in your favor. It's going to be a Dynamax Thunderous, uh, something I wasn't expecting to see as much of as, as I have while playing around with this meta game. But it's got to be the focal point now. It's the only thing uh, at full health uh, that can really deal that damage. And, and this type of Fini says, oh, yeah, that's fine. I don't want to deal with you like that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Thunderous is going to go for the Max Knuckle here, which is going to find its target onto the Metagross, but most importantly, is going to boost up that attack of the Urshifu by its side. So now there is kind of an even playing field here where, yes, Metagross has these defense boosts, but we will see the Surging Strikes come through once again, and this time will absolutely be enough with that limited health pool to knock out this Metagross. That's a really, really good turn from Marcus to move the momentum back very very quickly he's got his dynamax now and it's his turn to cause some problems with it uh, that's going to be max knuckle in this case saying well i don't really want to deal with the uh the the boost you've got so you know what we're just going to start dealing knockouts on that side and, and go from there so uh now this urshifu becomes really hard to handle and he called perfectly that tapu fini protect so that the tapu mm -hmm. fini not particularly safe uh, anymore as it's just shown its protector because rage powder can help it out but its ability to fire back and, and swing momentum is certainly a little bit limited now yeah well that's the thing that i worry about also just even rage powdering away yes amungus usually does carry an item like a koba berry which will be able to eat up a lot of the damage coming in from a max airstream but this is still a very very precarious position for alessandra to be in i love the duo of urshifu and thunderous and especially if you're going to be bringing thunderous into one of your games you're probably going to dynamax it here but urshifu wants to play it a little bit safe here maybe maybe seeing that you know a tapu fini might be going for a little bit more uh, damage onto it but thunderous does go for the max airstream with the rage powder here from amoongus will direct that attack away and there's that koba berry we were talking about i think most importantly though uh, the max airstream uh is gonna get a huge amount of damage down that's something that is very important but the speed boost is what i really wanted to talk about that just makes sure that to, mm -hmm. to wrap up the end game you're in a really good position you see that you know after the max knuckle boost the koba berry is not even enough to to stop it there and it's just taking so much damage yes tapu fini is uh limited in its ability to fight back but this dynamax thunderous is putting in work yeah, this is very similar to when we were seeing kind of in earlier forms of the metagame, just seeing a lot of Pokemon Dynamax in order to actually protect their partners. Like when you see maybe Durant in Milotic or something like that, just Durant being able to give Milotic so many of those defensive boosts to be able to help it stick around on the field. Well, in this case, it's the Max Airstream that's really putting in some work next to this Urshifu, allowing it to outspeed Alessandro's side of the field. It just makes sure. It, it really takes away, and this is something that I think a lot of players 
love to know is I don't even have to worry about speeds or, or crazy items like the choice scarf coming through. Um, that said, I mean, Tabu is just going to get hit by a max lightning. That's three different max moves out of this Thunderous, and each of them has been so, so valuable here. Tabu can't take that. It can't withstand that damage and is easily able to, you know, get knocked out there. And it's uh, a little bit too much for this Rotom to be asked to do, especially uh, when the Surging Strikes is an option and the Surshifu still mm -hmm. has a max knuckle boost. And it's got some hits to go. This berry uh, helps out Rotom for a very, very short time. Very short, though, because there's still two more hits, <laughs> and it's just going to take two in order to knock out this Rotom Marcus, cleaning up this very first game and taking the first win of this series. Really fantastic set from both players. Uh, I really liked the kind of right off the bat energy that we saw uh, with the overheat into Metagross, setting up the weakness policy, setting up the defense boosts. But then on the flip side of that, Marcus was able to withstand that pressure and go from there and say, well, I have a win condition in the back. Its name is Thunderous. I'm going to set it up. It's well, Thunderous can deal with your Tapu Fini or Amoongus and make sure that the Urshifu can do all it needs to do to wrap this game up. So really smartly played there. A really nice use of this defiant Thunderous and this more aggressive and physical kind of boosts that it's been able to to use and, and get through. So really interested to see what adaptations are made in, in game number two to not let Thunderous run away with the game like that. Well, let's go ahead and just get into it because that Thunderous was a huge problem, especially when you were taking a look at that Metagross versus Metagross matchup. So what kind of adaptations are we going to see here? It is going to be Rotom Heat now on the field as a lead for Alessandro with that Amoongus by his side and Marcus bringing in that Incineroar and that Thunderous. That was such a problem. But before when we saw that Thunderous hit the field, it almost immediately kind of went back into its Pokeball to be able to be preserved for later when we saw Alessandro lead out that Metagross. So is it going to be different this time around for Marcus? I think the Thunderous is in a really good position. I mean, Dynamax and then just throw out Max Airstreams, make sure that you're you're in a solid position to, to go from there and slow things down for a turn with the fake out from Incineroar, such as that Amoongus or even the Rotom. The Rotom's the only offensive threat. So this could be another kind of game where the, the early turns uh, get really, really exciting immediately a Dynamax. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm not much of a betting man, but in this case, I would bet that it's Thunderous. And the Incineroar is just there to support it, and he saw how good it was in game number one and just decided, I'm going to play that strategy earlier on in, in game number two. Well, especially because Thunderous by itself can still dish out a huge amount of damage. So Max Airstream though this time, ooh, there is no Max Knuckle Boost, but that Coba Berry wasn't really helpful at preserving this Amoongus uh, too much in that last game. But this time around, Alessandro's Amoongus will be able to hold on. Yeah, the Max Knuckle Boost was needed uh, to make sure that that one landed. And the Coba Berry is enough in this instance, but you know we know from a fact that the Airstream Boost is gonna come through and the Incineroar is just going to get to go follow up immediately after because of that speed boost. And the Amoongus, once again, as soon as it's facing off against the Thunderous, just removed from play. Yeah, Rotom, though, free to go for a nasty plot here with all of its health. So Alessandro definitely setting up for a lot of success with these next couple of turns, maybe looking at Rotom Heat to be a Dynamax, sir. It's certainly an option, right? You've got to consider it if you're in this position where you've put a nasty plot on it and that's what you want to kind of carry the game with and, and swing the momentum through with uh metagross of course loves it though that being said because of the nasty plot it's now not safe to activate your own weakness policy you then you just cannot justify overheating yeah. yourself uh after a nasty plot so the rotom is going to be a little more aggressive trying to put damage down on the other side of the field now and that could make it the focal point over this oft talked about metagross well, we're gonna have to see what Alessandro decides to do for this next turn, but we are already seeing that Marcus is tr going to do their best to try to target down this Metagross and, and really try to get it off of the field before it can do the same shenanigans that it did in that very first game. So Marcus is playing this hyper aggressive style of play for the second game, but it is going to be Tapu Fini taking Metagross's place. I, I think that's a, a very wise switch, just saying, you know what, I don't want to deal with you just 
targeting down my metagross early on with that flare blitz or, or any other combination like a max knuckle and a flare blitz uh, which would make the flare blitz even more powerful uh, something you don't want to deal with and as you mentioned the rotom now becomes the dynamax focal point of this team it's got the nasty plot boost it's going to have to start pulling its way and putting down that damage that metagross tried to uh, in the last game well, because of that max airstream boost, we are going to see this thunderous move first. So it is going to be the max knuckle right into that metagross slot. So Tapu Fini taking the brunt of that damage, but Incineroar's attack going to rise from that max knuckle. And we will see that Incineroar be able to fire off another attack here. Flare Blitz into that Tapu Fini. Great call from Alessandro to switch out that metagross. Yeah, he was very, very worried about losing that and thinking well i don't want to just give that over to you for free uh so i am going to make sure that i switch out the tapu fini is a great switch it takes max, Knuck max knuckle and flare blitz very very comfortably and allows this rotom the opportunity to fire back that said the max flare from rotom isn't enough for a knockout and that's no. a bit of a problem the thunderous is now given its last turn and has its choice what does it want to set up for the rest of the game another max knuckle another airstream or maybe max lightning as well uh, the max lightning which will definitely knock out this tapu fini yeah there's so many options so many great options on this thunderous which is why it makes such a great dynamax pokemon You've got the speed boost, the attack boost for your partner Pokemon, as well as being able to just deal so much super effective damage to that Tapu Fini, which is one of the most prominent Pokemon in the meta right now. So really great choice to have Thunderous as that Dynamaxer for Marcus's team and being able to bring it to both games has proven its worth for sure. Thunderous used to be a very supportive Pokemon, relying on Prankster, relying on Thunder Wave and such, and I'm really excited to see people experiment with it and learn their way around it uh, as a Dynamax option. It does decide on its third turn of Dynamax, though. I'm just going to protect and just max guard and, and not deal with this, uh, as Incineroar manages to weave in a nice little snarl, actually, to make that nasty plot from earlier a little more manageable. Yeah, it's not actually super often. I feel like we really see Snarl and Parting Shot on Incineroar anymore in tandem. But I really like that because while Incineroar is going to be super speedy, it is going to be able to get off those Snarls and those special attack drops onto both Pokemon. Well, minus the Protect, of course. But it, it will be able to move before the Rotom can fire off an attack. Right, and that means another Snarl is going to hit it in the next turn. I mean, I don't think that that's going to be enough to save the Thunderous, but the Thunderous there in its max guard, really nice, making sure that the Tapu Fini Protect is matched, and the Tapu Fini is now looking at a Wild Charge. Yes, it's not Max Lightning, but there's a Max Knuckle Boost from way, way earlier that is going to make it still very, very threatening. And even the potential switch in to Metagross is super uncomfortable to make if that amount of damage is going down. So really, really good play there. Tapu Fini doesn't want to take it, and Metagross has given its chance to see how well it fares. We're about to find out whether that was a good choice from Alessandro. As Thunderous does go for the Wild Charge into the Tapu Fini slot, and wow! That is a lot of damage for that Metagross to be able to take. Yes, Thunderous does get knocked out to the recoil from that Wild Charge, but here comes that Snarl, which, ooh, is going to be super effective against that Metagross, too. Yep, that Metagross is struggling. Uh, it's taken a whole lot of damage on the switch in and is not having uh, a good time at all. Uh, you know, the weakness policy does go off, though. Uh, that's really important if you can weave in an attack after that, but his opportunities to weave in said attacks certainly reduced because of how low its health is with the combination Snarl and Wild Charge there. So uh, the Incineroar is still going to be moving before it, and there's no easy way to, to change that one around. But Thunderous is removed from the field, and, and that's that's a help. That's, that's certainly <laughs> something. Yeah, but it's going to be Dynamax over for Alessandro right now. Rotom Heat now... Reverting back from that Dynamax form, Snarl here might be enough to actually be able to knock out this Metagross, uh, but we will have to, to see. Urshifu this time around is not going to have those attack boosts or that speed boost coming in from Thunderous, so we will get a chance to see how much damage this does against this Rotom. Well, Metagross isn't going to stick around to find out uh, if the Snarl is going to be able to get the <laughs> knockout, just leaving in place of the Tapu Fini, which may get a Snarl for its troubles on the way in anyway. Um, that could be certainly problematic if you're trying to kind of sweep the game and swing it back around in your favor towards the end. Uh, that said, this Rotom, probably not going to enjoy this in the slightest. Uh, we saw how much it's done before. Uh, obviously, there's no max knuckle boost on the Urshifu that we've seen in previous games, but... Um, 
still a lot of damage landing from these mm -hmm. surging strikes, and even after the berry will we'll be sticking. Yeah, Rotom will be able to stick around on the field to be able to fire off another attack, but that surging strike's definitely very scary here, and Instead of getting off yet another Snarl, so that nasty plot boost we saw at the very beginning of the game for Alessandro's Rotom Heat, that's not going to matter anymore. Oh, that, that boost is absolutely long gone and has uh, been easily taken away as the Urshifu was able to just tank up that Thunderbolt and say, okay, that was fine, I guess, thanks, uh, and just shrug that <laughs> one off and, and able to, to keep on going from there. So the Snarls continuing to hit, are just wearing Alessandro down and limiting his options. That Metagro switching out as well has lost its boost from the weakness policy, so even if it was able to even an attack, now it's going to be even weaker than its potential damage output usually is. Uh, we'll be able to see uh, if Marcus can kind of just tidy up by these constant barrages of snarls and uh, making sure its partner is just picking off Pokemon as it goes. Yeah, the snarls have been super helpful to limit the damage output, especially from that Rotom not only mitigating out that nasty plot boost that it got at the very beginning of the game, but I believe at this point, that's been three snarls at this point. So, mm -hmm. you know, Detect can come through for Urshifu, keeping it safe from any future attacks, but Rotom does go for Protect this time. So Alessandro trying to play this one a little bit safer as <laughs> here comes another snarl. Oh, Marcus has done a really good job on two occasions now uh, in this game of matching the Protect from his opponent and making sure that he doesn't get caught trying to attack into Protect as, as the partner can just take out mm -hmm. what he's trying to attack with. So in this case, it's the Urshifu, uh, doesn't want to get caught by a Moonblast, says, okay, I think Rotom's going to Protect, and he matches that Protect very, very well. That's just very good understanding of the game and the flow, um, mm -hmm. but now you know he knows he's in a position where either Metagross has to switch in, Rotom has to take the hit and get knocked out, or fish for a double Protect and see if he can go from there, which is... Uh, a bit of an ask in most cases. Well, a little bit of a switch up here. We we are going to get a chance to see this Rillaboom from Marcus come out onto the field. Uh, Urshifu definitely doesn't want to take any attacks from that Rotom, but you know who's going to be able to take those attacks pretty handedly? This Rillaboom. Yeah, I mean, this Rillaboom is going to be in a, a great position, particularly if Rotom's scared off. Um, Rotom protecting is an interesting one, obviously, you know, I think this one really shows how much Marcus values the Urshifu as his endgame condition. Mm -hmm. um, Urshifu had the option to knock out the Rotom last turn, but he was so cautious of keeping the Urshifu and making sure that Tapu Fini didn't knock it out that it really shows just a great understanding and this Metagross uh, is going to cause issues. Um, and, you know, the Urshifu is so important to him, it didn't tank that Moonblast, and there's really room <sighs> taking it a whole lot better. Yeah, I mean, especially with all the Snarl drops that Tapu Fini has had to take too, and the fact that Alessandro is down to their final two Pokemon for this game, there's no way that Tapu Fini can reset the drops that have come through from all those Snarls. No, Tapu Fini is going to be stuck with those for the rest of the game, and its damage output is exceptionally low. Um, it's an interesting one that, you know, Marcus was okay with just saying, oh, well, Rillaboom can go out in front of Rotom, uh, but at the same time, you know, he's got rid of the Metagross, um, this Rillaboom is going to be able to control the terrain as well. Tapu Fini can't switch out because that Metagross was felled on the way in, so there's no way to avoid that. And obviously, we know what happens when Rillabooms are able to play in grassy terrain. It is a bit of a problem, namely for Pokémon like Tapu Fini. Yes, uh, a grassy glide here would definitely spell disaster for this Tapu Fini, uh, or even something like a wood hammer coming through. So very, very super effective grass type attacks able to come out from that Rillaboom for sure. Uh, so Alessandro is going to have to play around this very, very carefully. You know, you could go for a greedy play here and maybe, hey, Tapu Fini might be, uh, you know, the target of some of the, these attacks, but Rillaboom really not playing around here, does not want Rotom to be able to get a nasty plot boost off, and now Rotom is in a position where another Snarl will be able to knock it out. Yeah, this Rotom is getting bullied now. Uh, it came back in after getting Snarled numerous times, and now it gets Fake Out and Snarled again. As you mentioned, this Tapu Fini has just been eating Snarls turn on turn on turn, and we see how little damage that does to the Rillaboom, so uh, not many great options left here. Uh, and of course, that Urshifu, which Marcus preserved earlier, didn't want to lose it to, yes, it would have traded a knockout, but it would have got knocked out in return. It's there as that 
super backup win condition and is something he's able to deal with. Um, it's now the second turn of Rillaboom being on the field, and, and there it is. Alessandro knows 